and bet white sharks they don't only the 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 bigger white sharks they don't only eat marine mammals it's mm -hmm. by far their favorite food um especially if they if they if they come upon um a dead whale and it's basically you know an all you can eat mm -hmm. buffet of your favorite food um they'll go to town but even really large white sharks will will eat things as small as squid they eat wow. a lot of smaller shark species. They're very opportunistic predators. One of the one of the sharks we put a camera tag on off of Cape Cod. Her nickname is Arbok. She's one of our favorites over the last couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. She's about a, a 12 foot long female. She's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and we put a camera tag on her a few years ago. And she spent like what seemed like a, a silly amount of energy to eat this one tiny flounder. And in the <laughs> footage, she just chases this little, little flounder. And the flounder's doing loop to loops and all this stuff. And oh, wow. she she pursued that thing and ate it. And we watched it. And I was like, that didn't even, you didn't even get the calories back that you just spent on that thing. <laughs> that's crazy. So they'll they'll eat all sorts of things. But that's one thing that's really kind of an open mystery for the Gulf of Mexico and the waters off of the Southeast. We mm -hmm. know those are important overwintering areas for the species. Mm -hmm. We know that there are a lot of other species that make the same kind of migration. Yeah. I've studied bluefin tuna for a while. They spawn oh, yeah. in mm -hmm. the Gulf of Mexico in the winter. So um, there are a there's a whole bunch of stuff they could be eating. You mentioned the oil rigs. They hold so much life. But oh, we yeah. don't know exactly what it is um, they're doing when they're there, which is why this this camera tag technology is going to end up being so important. Um, from the tracks, we can we can try to figure out what they're doing based on what we know about the environment there, and mm -hmm. um, and we can we can try to figure it out, but we don't actually know without visual observation. So that's why the camera tag is like where it's at um and no that's incredible i mean the idea of actually being able to eyeball what they're doing i mean is is stunning i mean who would have ever thought that a white shark is going to go chase a flounder you know yeah <laughs> i mean I like what is that you know you expect <laughs> them to be out and uh you know popping a seal out of the water and you know whatever and here you know here you go they're after a flounder so kind of demystifying some of that but it seems like every time there's a white shark demystification there's another mystery that comes oh, in. exactly. And I, <laughs> and I mean, that is that is one of my favorite things, not only about, you know, studying these animals in particular, but but just being a scientist in general. I remember mm -hmm. when I started, you know, college and I knew I wanted to get my Ph.D. in marine science at some mm -hmm. point. Um, but I thought, you know, I would get my graduate degree and I would be an expert. Like I remember going to aquariums when I was a kid and being like, when I grow up and get my PhD, I'm going to know everything about all of these species. And you start learning. And the more you learn, it's just so humbling because you're like, oh, my gosh, there is so much left to learn. And you realize that that concept of being an expert, it doesn't really exist. You can know a lot about something, but the more you learn about it, the more you realize there's left to learn. So we do a lot of outreach events um, mm -hmm. with kids. We go into schools. And a lot of times they almost seem kind of deflated, like, well, you guys are learning all there is to learn about about sharks and white sharks. What is there going to be left for me to do when I grow up? And I'm like, don't worry, there are still <laughs> so many mysteries.